So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews here on Hospital Radio Reading and for my YouTube channel. Uh, and I'm happy to welcome back a friend of the show, the fantastically talented Daniel Ryan. Thank you for coming back on. It's the first time I've been the friend of anyone's show and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> now normally i talk to people from their homes here in the uk or, or wherever they are in the world but you're actually away at the moment so i mean what I can am. you tell us well if you could see that way you could see i'm in a hotel room and you would be able to see that it's very sunny and so i'm wearing probably not what most people are wearing in the uk yes i'm in tenerife um of all places in the world uh filming something i think i can say for the bbc um i think i can say i've been here nearly a month um and uh i can actually see a film crew directly out of, if i could turn you around um there's a film crew right there outside my room so we're actually in a it's quite a claustrophobic drama and it feels quite claustrophobic when even on your day off i can watch i can watch it being filmed <laughs> but yes uh, something uh, it's a really exciting three-part thing for the bbc but I can't say what it is, and I can't say who's in it. But I think um, I, you know, I don't know when this will go out, but possibly people might know by then. I mean, I imagine you know, getting to do something abroad. I mean, for for you, just just being able to get back to work again must be amazing. But also to 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 get to kind of see different parts of the world must be great as well. Oh yeah, I mean, it's an amazing luxury. This thing we're doing now was actually so I think I'd done I think I finished work on the Bay 3 so that was December we went into lockdown in the March and then this was meant to film the February just gone and we went through uh, quite a process of dates moving changing um, it was on it was off we got to the airport we got our boarding cards and Spain cancelled the project so after you know after nearly 14 months of unemployment it was very exciting to be going to work and then the rug was pulled again uh, so yeah it's been um it's been a bit of a time but i mean it is very nice to be able to as it's i keep speaking to my wife at home and facetiming and you know i call at half four and it's dark and i'm here and it's still sunny and warm and it's 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 I feel like a very lucky boy. Yeah. I mean, are you getting much time to relax, to enjoy the sun? Because I mean, obviously, yeah, like you say, back here in the UK, it's very cold, very bitterly cold. Um, so I think a lot of people need that sunshine at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it is nice. I haven't had a holiday in a long time. And not that this is a holiday, Matthew. This is hard work. I'm grafting away, uh, thinking about the piece, even just talking to you. Um, yeah, don't tell the producers, but I've, I've probably got more days off than I should have, but you can't go home. So, you know, what do you do? But ultimately, it's that thing as well. You know, people kept saying to me, oh, you'll be back in the winter when you'll have a great tan. And wow, you know, seven weeks in Tenerife, blah, blah, blah. And um, the drama that we're doing sort of takes place on one day. And it's right at the beginning of arriving in Tenerife, I'm probably giving too many things away. Um, and um, so you have to stay the same colour that you were on the day you arrived. So lots of sitting in rooms, hence why I'm overjoyed to be talking to you, because I can't go and sit outside and sunbathe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, obviously, yeah, like we were saying at the beginning, lockdown has been tough for everyone. I mean, in the in the kind of early days of the initial lockdown back in 2020 i mean what were you kind of doing to fill your time when obviously people couldn't go out what i mean were you sort of learning new skills doing new things well i mean it was it was really funny i've talked to a lot of actors about this and i guess anyone in 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 the performance business because you know normally when you're out of work um you know you're hearing of people going up for jobs getting jobs what's filming etc etc what new plays are coming on because it was all you know over you weren't in competition with anybody it was weirdly one of the most freeing times briefly that i think i've ever had and i think a lot of actors did that go you weren't at home thinking Oh, I should be doing something. Or you know, or why isn't the phone ringing? What you know, where's my agent? Or 
none of that because it just couldn't happen so in a weird way for the first time ever we all had this kind of level playing field and i mean and i think that probably applies you know uh, across the globe so it did give you that time to things i'd put up well i painted my, the garage <laughs> <laughs> I got up to, I mean, we got up to loads of stuff around the garden, things that, you know, were always things that, uh, oh, one, one day I'll, I'll, I'll get on with that, I'll get that done. And uh, so there was a lot of that to start with. Also, my son was ill, so we were still uh, trekking up to Great Ormond Street Hospital every three weeks. So um, there was that and the fear, you know, obviously on top of that, the fear of, um, of, of COVID and um just you know but again some of those drives through i live in west sussex and some of those drives through london with nobody on the streets and nobody driving around and just us with our paperwork just in case we were stopped to be asked where we were going you know to the hospital um you know they were sort of extraordinary the once in a life so that'll never happen god fingers crossed that'll never happen again and some of that was sort of um amazing and then of course it all wears off and uh, you realize that you, you know the money's going out of the bank and none is going in and uh, and the telly became a savior for a lot of people you know thank goodness for you know forms of entertainment and uh, you know it i mean it was an extraordinary time for for all of us but i think um yeah my unemployment dragged on way too long i actually started working for amazon I was doing Amazon deliveries and uh, just for my mental health, to be perfectly honest, to be doing something because, you know, you know me, I'd, I'd like to be, I like to be busy. So um, it, it was hard, it was hard finding that switch off, but freeing at the same time. And, you know, I think we've all had a, 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 an extraordinary period of time. I don't think necessarily it's been uh, very good for everyone and, you know, or, I've lost relatives and I lost my mate Bobby Ball and you know all of those things were, were, were on top of everything else were you know awful awful but I hope we're out of it I hope we're, hope we're I hope we can um, you know live with it now and, and move on and look at it at, um, as an extraordinary time. Now, I mean, we will in a little while talk about the amazing bubble ball because obviously sorely missed. And I just wanted to obviously find out a bit about your kind of memories of working with him. But I mean, before that, just thinking back to like, you know, a couple of years ago, I, I had the pleasure of coming to your house. We did an interview yes. um, in your kitchen. It's just so, it was so strange how, you know, it, over the last couple of years, you know, things like that, simple things like just visiting someone's house, you know, weren't possible for a big chunk of time. And it was just kind of getting used to that new way of living. And it, I mean, how, how did you find that? I mean, again, it was, I mean, what's funny is, you know, um, and I, I have talked about this a little bit, but I haven't talked about it a lot because it's, you know, it's my son's business, uh, you know, and he was eight and he got cancer. And so we had all of that. So in many ways, our world had been turned upside down anyway. And then this happened and it was a bit like, oh, now this, because we were already in a state of, um, you know, everything had changed in our lives already so it was just it it probably wasn't as extreme as it was for a lot of people because we were already uh mentally challenged in the first place um so i mean it was you know it was it was hard i'm not i'm not going to deny it it was, it was really really hard but yeah i missed people and obviously what we're talking to each other on now i've never zoomed anyone in my life before that i mean whoever you know i used to remember hearing the commercials on the radio for for zoom you know video conferencing and you know they'd pass you by but now it's as it's an essential part of our lives i mean all the work i've got this year has been via zoom and and you know auditions are now via zoom or uh, you know we're, we're all used to taping as actors but you know we're now meeting people down the lens and it's you know getting used to that getting used to just you know that things have stuff like that has changed and i think that will be the new way of working uh, for us i, I mean po permanently you know uh, in certain circumstances and i think just getting used to that i tell you what my lawn has never looked better though i mean <laughs> i was 
I was mowing like a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is that everyone's had all that spare time. Um, the other thing as well that I think the last year and a half in particular has done for people has brought the, the amazing work the NHS do, do back into their minds. Because I think some people maybe took them for granted for a little while. I mean, what would you say to sort of, you know, the amazing NHS that we have, you know, and I, I know as well with your son and his treatment, I imagine that, that they are, well, they are angels. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, again, you know, prior to COVID, we had the whole world of the NHS open up. You know, I've, I, I can't even think of three times that I've ever had to go to in a hospital ever or, you know, use their services. I mean, you know, in terms of, and I have to talk about it in terms of, you know, Mac being ill, in terms of uh, his diagnosis was a bit of a, a slow process, but my word, once he, you know, once he got into the system, I'm going to get upset talking about it, I think. Once he got into the system, they were incredible. I mean, incredible. And they couldn't have been kind, you know, and it's the kindness that you can't, you know, let's tell, you know, in a funny way, we can take the medicine for granted because that's what they're trained to do. But the kindness and the attention and the effort and the care and the love, that's what you can't, you, you know, you can't buy that. So then what they've done, you know, with COVID on top of that, in my experience, it's, you know, it has been two years of if you ever weren't aware or you didn't care or you didn't think about the NHS and you just went to the doctors when you needed your pills for this and you broke your arm. And I mean, those guys have, you know, it wouldn't surprise me, you know, if in the long term we have PSD suffering from from you know, uh, healthcare workers, um, because that they, they've experienced something even way, way beyond what that we can ever imagine. And, um, yeah, they're brilliant. I mean, they're brilliant. I mean, thank you for being so honest. I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, I, not, not to keep it too down. I also wanted to talk a bit about, <laughs> of course, Bobby Ball, because I mean, obviously yeah. the sad news that we lost him, um, but I mean, what are your memories of working with him? Because I mean, I, I never got the pleasure of meeting him. I got tweeted by him once and that was just enough for me. That was amazing. <laughs> so, I mean, for you, what was it like to work with such a legend? Well, that would have been enough for me as well. If I, if uh, that had, I'd never met him and that had happened, that would have been, uh, that would have been enough. Well, I remember hearing, cause we were, we, um, it was a long process, uh, in a way, Mount Pleasant happening. It started as a sitcom and we did a reading for the BBC and it didn't happen there. And then uh, I think there was a few talks with ITV, but then uh, the boss of comedy at uh, BBC took it, uh, picked it up from Sky and she developed it into something else, the comedy drama that we know it is. And then they were talking about possibly recasting um, because it was a different fish and they, you know, uh, and then Sally got pregnant, so we couldn't film it because of... So it went on for a, quite an extensive time. But during that process, they were able to attach the most extraordinary cast. You know, people who, on paper... So, you, you know, sometimes you say who's in the cast, and people are, oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. And you'd say our cast and be like, what? <laughs> it was such a strange mishmash of, of worlds, if you like, as well. Um, you know, very serious actors do, you know, I'd not done, I'd done a lot of comedy when I was a younger actor. And then I think people had, you know, you get boxed off and, you know, if you can do some crying on the telly, then suddenly you're doing all that kind of stuff. Um, and so to be given that opportunity and then, so anyway, so I knew Bob was, was going to be doing it. And I remember we had a few days rehearsal, which you obviously don't get very often. And I was so nervous about meeting him because he was such, such a hero to me. Uh, you know, and I don't, I know I've said it before and I know um, people say that a lot about people, but, you know, literally the work, that, the work, that's what it is. You know, the work that him and, and Tommy did as part of my childhood, they're sort of, they, they, you know, they moulded what my sense of humour is. 
you know what I mean? When you think about things, how that's how sort of influential they were, you know, that, and that's, you know, if I'm funny, if I can be funny on screen, yes, that's, that's because the writing is brilliant and everything, but my sense of how to play it kind of comes from him, you know, so um, it was terrifying meeting him. He was the most down to earth, lovely man you've ever met. It was fantastic watching a comedian develop his sort of acting chops. I know he'd done stuff before and all the rest of it, but this was, you know, this was, and he had big stuff to play, his wife dying and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And watching him develop and learn his craft, even though he would always say, well, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not an actor. I'm not an actor. And they go, well, what are you doing here, Bob? Because uh, I think everyone else is, so you're going to have to be one. <laughs> and um, we just became, we became very close. All that singing and dancing stuff we did together, you know, that grew out of the fact that people really um they just li li liked it you know and, and in many ways it could have felt over the top but for some reason those, those two characters it, it sort of made sense this silly routine that they developed together and, and you know and he'd ring me up at the night before and he'd go what, what's this song Dan? what's this song lady gaga i don't know it i don't know it you know and uh so i'd sing it to him and i'd send him a youtube link and everything and i'd go watch the choreography you come back and go, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? So I, I, you know, I'm then choreographing these daft routines to make an audience laugh with Bobby Ball. And, you know, to my grave, it will be like, to have worked with him is one thing. To have made him laugh is another thing. And, you know, and I'll, you know, I'll take that to, to my grave. It, it, it was... It was an experience. My dad died when I was, when I was, um, he reminded me of my dad. And my dad died when I was 17. And I think on a certain level, he was a bit of a surrogate. He sort of reminded me so much of my, my dad had a great sense of humor. He was a very funny man. He was the life and soul in a group of people. And um, I think all of that felt like, and he had a tash. <laughs> and uh, all of that <laughs> felt really familiar to me so i probably got closer to bob than than maybe you normally would or i should have or whatever you know i've stayed in his house etc etc you know i'm still on the phone you know i get in touch with yvonne when i can and um yeah i i adored him i adored him and to lose him is is a real real shame i mean they always say you should never meet your heroes but from what i've been hearing from people it seems like yeah. that is not the case at all with bobby no, not at all. And funnily, uh, there was a tribute and a, a ball to raise money up in, in Blackpool last weekend, and I couldn't attend, which I was absolutely gutted about, but there was no way I could make it work. And so uh, we put together um, some outtakes from his outtakes from Mount Pleasant, of which there were many. <laughs> And um, and the and uh, Sally read something that I wrote, and I started it with they say never meet your heroes, and it you know it oh, this is the statement that does not ring true with with that man. And they showed the they showed the clips. Um, Sally called me and told me about it, and they showed the the, the clips, the outtakes, and the, it got a stand innovation. You know, and you can't say better than that. So we, you know, we, I think without even being there, I, I feel like, you know, um, I was in the room. I mean, what would you say was maybe the one thing that you learnt from Bobby that you'll take forward for the rest of your life? That's a good question. I think that even when you're in a bad mood, you can be funny. <laughs> Because <laughs> sometimes he was a bad sleeper, Bob, and he, he, he'd often, he'd kill me for telling you, but he'd often, he said, oh, I came, I came down at three o'clock in the morning. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I woke up, I had a shower, got dressed, came downstairs, and uh, and it, it was pitch black. And I said, well, it will be pitch black at three o'clock in the morning. And he said, and I, I said to him, what, what time is it? I said, you know, have your watch on? No, I said, did you not look at your phone? No, did you not have an alarm clock to wake you up? No, I just got up, because I always get up at the same time. And it was three o'clock in the morning, and he did this all the time. But then he'd be a moody sod in the morning. He'd be, you know, he'd pro be properly tired and a bit moody. 
and uh, we'd have to spend a bit of time kind of you know getting his showbiz pants back on and um yeah but even in those times oh boy he could turn it on he could turn it on so uh so yeah there, that's a good lesson from uh, from from bobby ball once you're on set do your work leave mr mr misery behind you and get on with it <laughs> now we must talk about the bay obviously two series have gone out so far and it has been gripping from start to finish i mean for you being part of such a popular series must be so much of an honor and a joy to be to be doing it because it's it's loved and obviously we know there's a third series coming no i know it's brilliant and the pressure is on yeah that's what happens when you have you know, it's, what's great is in terms of ratings, which we shouldn't judge everything by, but we've had this kind of growing, growing thing where, um, you know, it gets bigger and bigger on every episode. And I don't really know how that's possible, but that's what happens. And certainly it was the most binged show on uh, ITV last year, The Hub, kind of, um, you know, everybody watched the first one and went bam and went out and watched, you know, which I don't know if I'm a great believer in, that kind of thing, with, with, with a crime drama, with something that essentially has a whodunit at the end, even though that's not the journey, I don't think. Um, it's brilliant to be in it. Um, Catherine Oldfield, who's the executive producer, has, has sort of been a friend, and an, uh, I met her doing Home Fires, the much-missed Home Fires, still. Um, and she's been really brilliant at kind of... Uh, she really likes what I do so when she got me in for the bay it's funny because I didn't feel like I'd played a, a character of um, you know I play um, a lot of uh, well losers for want of a better word and I mean that in kind of like you lose your wife or you know sort of sad characters tragic characters I don't know what it is about this face but <laughs> obviously something. and um I'd, ne I'd never really played a, a figure of authority and I was really nervous of it. I was really scared um, that I couldn't pull it off because you, you think, well, you've been acting for 30 years and no one's really cast you in this kind of uh, gritty boss role. Why not? Well, maybe you can't do it, you know. So I was very scared the first series and felt like I managed to pull it off. And then so it gave me a lot more confidence with the second series of where to go with it. And also they developed the character and I knew the sort of route that the character was, was going in. Um, we have more of that in the third series, which might be out quite early in next year. But uh, that's, I don't know that for definite. Um, and it's, no, it's a privilege to do. Obviously, this we've lost more than Christie, COVID, length of time all kinds of stuff not that she had covid but i mean i mean um just the business closing down other opportunities came and she had to make a decision and ultimately we didn't know if it was going to go again da, da, da. so anyway um, more than went on to other things so we've got amazing marcia thomason who um i think people of a certain age will remember when she was much i mean she's in cobra and she works a lot um over here but uh, Maine, what well, she lives in LA, uh, she's still a mank through and through, but she lives in LA, uh, you know, she does a lot of the CSI stuff and she's been in movies with Eddie Murphy and um, I worked with her before on um, a series called, uh, now I can't remember because I'm old. Um, what was it, Messiah? So Ken Stott had a series called Messiah he decided to leave, I think, but they wanted to carry on the franchise. So me, Mark Warren, and and Marcia um, did it. So I worked with her before, and I know that she's great fun, and she is just brilliant in this. She's, I mean, she's. We couldn't have hoped for someone. You know, if you're going to get someone new in a show, the stakes are high because there will still be people who switch it on on the first night. It won't have read that Morgan's not in it anymore. You know, and they'll go, who's, what, what, hey, where's she, where's she come from? And I know 15 minutes in, they will have forgotten because that's showbiz. Uh, <laughs> and she's fantastic in it. So it gets an injection of, we've got, because I always think of the Bay as, um, 
as a family drama, as a sort of domestic, it's about families, you know, whether it's hers, whether it's mine, primarily what the, the family that are in the middle of, of, you know, something terrible happening to them and, our, you know, and our family liaison officer being in the middle of that. Um, uh, and she comes in and she's just brilliant. She owns the show. Her family setup is very fascinating and I think very relate's going to be very relatable for a lot of a lot of people watching it and the crime is amazing and the family this year are a star I mean the work is astonishingly good I'm so so proud to be in it and um yeah so a new one coming out next year and fingers crossed that um that you know we 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 get the same amount of people liking it and if we do then we'll just keep making them I think I mean, the other amazing, amazing thing about the show is obviously the setting as well, because, I mean, it's, I believe it's all filmed in Morecambe. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, we cheat a little bit. You know, we do film, well, we film things in uh, Wigan, and Manchester, and Bolton. So we do nip about a bit, but that's out of necessity for, you know, the next, um, it's a Muslim family in the next series. So we've got stuff at a mosque and whatever, and they don't have a mosque in, in Morecambe. As far as I'm aware, I haven't seen one. Um, so, but yes, we, ostensibly we spend uh, quite a bit of time in amazing Morecambe with amazing people who put up with so much when we we're closing the seafront, you know, and all those, you know, Tyson Fury doesn't get to jog in the route he normally takes and all the rest of it. <laughs> Super accommodating. You know, I've worked in places before and the excitement of having a film crew in your town is is one thing, but it's actually a nuisance. And you know, you get to a second series, and people are not as keen on on you being there as they were before. Morecambe has been like total, total open arms because I think they're loving the fact that we're there. The tourist trade is up there. You know, they're saying that it's you know because of the show, and people going, God, it looks beautiful there. Let's let's go there. You know. A lot of people drive past up the M1 when they're going to the Lake District, and I think a little bit more often people are stopping off and and having a look. I heard there was a, a there's a Bay TV show tour that happens sometimes, <laughs> which is amazing. And um, yeah, they're they they're just lovely, and it's great for the town because I think um, you know over the years. I mean, I lived in Brighton for a long time when I. The first time I ever went to Brighton, it was it was uh, you know, sort of a bit on its knees. It was a real sort of sad town, and over you know 25, 30 years, it's you know the incredible place that it is now. And you know there are a lot of seaside towns that haven't had that attention and that love and that kind of movement of people coming there. And I think it's really good. I think it's really good for 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 Morecambe. And um, yeah, they're they're dead nice, so uh, I can't complain. And it's be it's beautiful to be there. It, you know, it is. I miss not living in, in on the coast anymore. Getting to go and be there for a while is, is, is just really lovely. Now, I mean, obviously life's sort of getting back to normal. And I imagine once you get back to the UK, have you got kind of things in the in the pipeline going forward um, that, that you're excited about? Yeah, I have. I Just before I came out, I was offered a job. Uh, yes, I'm going to do some theatre, which I haven't done for about uh, four years, five years. I did um, Ben Gary, Glenn Ross in the West End with Christian Slater uh, a few years back. And that's the last thing I've done. Yeah, so I'm playing the lead in the play at the National Theatre from uh, April, I think, to the end of June um, with my very dear friend Claire Rushbrook. And the makers of said play did not know we were very dear friends, which is so it's nice. So we're playing a couple. It's literally the two of us on stage for the whole time. Um, I like a challenge and it's going to be one. I'm already scared. Stop making me talk about it, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it's called Middle and it's on at the National Theatre and I hope lots of people come and see it because um, it's a brilliant, beautiful, uh, relatable, funny, tragic play in the company of a husband and wife who I don't think they're aware that they're about to hit a crisis at four o'clock in the morning in their house as they both make a cup of tea but 
that's that's what happens and we watch a discussion happen that's been waiting to happen and yeah it's um ev everything that y you might um i think people will i certainly read it and went oh, okay i've been spied on uh because um some of it rang very 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 true with me um yeah so that's 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 the next thing that'll take me up to next summer and then um fingers crossed we may be more combined again who knows I mean, for you, obviously, it must be quite exciting to, to you know, get back to live theatre, bearing in mind everything that's been going on over the last couple of years. So to yeah. kind of have that interaction with a, a live audience, to, to, to be in a theatre and know that it's, it's kind of going back to normal as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, obviously, well, we'll see where we are in April when we open. But um, I think looking at a sea of masked faces might be, slightly you know that would be a new experience for me but if we can persuade people to come out and support the theatre and that's you know also part of why I want to do it because you know we're we're, we're sorely in need of, of, of people trying to get back in those buildings and those buildings are under enormous financial pressure from the amount that they've lost and continued to pay rent for and everything despite you know um any help that they might have got from the government which a lot have not got but let's not get political um yeah so i think if i'm any part of drawing people back into those spaces then that that's great and to be um you know i think if i look back at when i was at drama school and going to see plays at the national theater i mean i've been very enough very, very lucky to play at, you know all the theatres that I've ever wanted to play at um, and I have played at the National uh, before uh, a good few years ago so for them to ask me to come and do something I was I was just like it was a real it was a real six o'clock on a Friday evening agent calling I'm off you're getting off and I was it was what <laughs> what you know we're all we've all got imposter syndrome but I, I had a real real moment of it there thinking what well, you know I haven't really worked with the writer before, I haven't worked with the director, and for some reason they've taken a leap of faith with me being right for the part, but I think I am, so I think they've done very well. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to it, getting, you know, um, and yeah, getting some interaction, you know, being with people, you know, that's, that's going to be great, it's going to be great. Now, I just want to say it's been a pleasure as always talking to you, but before we go, is there any messages you'd like to give to any of the patients who are currently stuck in hospital at the moment? It must be a very, very difficult time for, for patients in hospital right now. I know because I've been the, the parent of one. So, you know, I, I speak out to all the, the, the parents who are, all the people who are unable to be at bedsides um, at times when you really need a friend, you know. And I'd just like to think that, you know, if we've managed to raise a smile and take people's minds off, off that, you know, for, for the the time we've been speaking then that's you know i'm all about that i'm all about you know i've probably changed a bit in the last two years i think we probably all have um you know and kindness is something that um even though i'm possibly if you read my twitter feed i'm not very nice about the government but they're the only people i don't like <laughs> <laughs> everybody else is <laughs> <laughs> is yeah we need to be kind to each other and so all those people are in hospital beds right now i wish you could have all of your family around you and i know how that feels i've dropped off my wife and my son at great ormond street and wandered around for 10 hours outside not being able to go in and um i know how painful that is and i know from family the people w we've lost not being able to be there to say goodbye to them as well has been horrible. So if you're ill in bed right now, love the person who's there with you, and um, and and soon, soon, please, we can all have something that bears a resemblance to normality and um, just get better. Just get better. That's what we want. Thank you so much, Daniel. As ever, it's always a pleasure. Uh, of course, keep safe, and uh, yeah, we'll have to catch up again soon. Yes, absolutely. Lovely talking to you, Matthew. Thank you.